And Charleston starts right now. Good morning to you, Charleston. It is Wednesday. It's March 10th, hump day, as it were. I'm John Bruce. Thanks for being here. Some people just don't want to these days. Storm tracker meteorologist Emily Gracie leading us off, and let's keep this streak of sunshine going. What do you say? Yeah, we do have more sunshine in the forecast today. Get a cool start right now, but it's not as cold as it was yesterday. So no warnings or watches out there as far as freeze and frost. To look at those temperatures, though, still need the jackets. 41 right now in Charleston, 39 in Somerville, 36 in Monk's Corner. High pressure still in control, so still a dry forecast out there. Another beautiful one today. Layer up because while it's cool this morning, it won't be later on this afternoon. We made it to 70 yesterday. We'll surpass that today. Low to mid 70s coming in later this afternoon. Big changeover in those temperatures from early morning to afternoon. So warm up on the way, but it doesn't stop there. We're going to keep climbing. I'll tell you how high the temperatures will go before we do start to see them come back down. And when rain does return to the forecast, that's coming up too. Emily, thank you. First this morning, we're going to hear from an Isle of Palms City Council member the first time since a tense meeting Tuesday evening where it was revealed that an internal candidate for the chief for the ILP Fire Department has rejected the offer. Our Rachel Ellis caught up with one of those city leaders who now needs an open discussion. Uh, frustration, disappointment. That's how Ryan Buchanan felt following the special meeting on the Isle of Palms. I mean, people want to have an open and transparent um, council and government, and that was again was taken away from them today. The city councilman says there needs to be open discussion among leaders after a council member said he wants to only look at external candidates. I would like to make a recommendation, and I'll make it in the form of a motion, that we um, go back to our finalist list of, of 10 candidates, um, specifically going to the external candidates only, um, due to, again, that feedback that we got that um, they're looking for a full consensus support from council behind a single candidate. Buchanan says all 10 of the original candidates should be considered. We have problems now that need to be solved. We have problems now that need to be resolved within, within the department, within the island. And that's why I think it's paramount that we move forward with an internal candidate. He told us an internal candidate can hit the ground running. We're moving into a busy season and we need to have somebody of leadership in charge of, of the department. He also believes only looking outside Isle of Palms is bad for morale. We have qualified candidates internally and to specifically say none of them will, you know, will work and we're going to um, go externally. You know, it's demoralizing to the department. Councilman Ryan Buckhannon says that a group of firefighters signed a letter supporting an internal candidate. We did reach out to other city council members, including Mayor Jimmy Carroll, about Tuesday's meeting. So far, though, we've not heard back. Charleston City Council, they voted to extend their face mask ordinance. That mandate's been extended until April the 14th. We caught up with one council member who supports the extension, saying that wearing that mask must continue. We still have an obligation to protect ourselves and protect those, those visitors. And the mask, by all um, uh, scientists, by all health officials, has an, a positive impact in controlling and slowing down the spread of this virus. Um, and we need to do that. Council is set to meet again on April 13th. That's when we'll decide whether or not to end or continue that ordinance. Happening this morning, there is a statewide tornado drill. Again, it's only a drill. National Weather Service says that's going to happen at 9 o'clock this morning. No need to do anything out of the ordinary today. But it could be in early 2025 before work begins on the Highway 41 project. Project managers presented a revised plan during Tuesday night's Mount Pleasant Town Council meeting that would divert traffic around the historically Black Phillips community. Some worry the new proposed route could disturb other historical sites. They know that there are four known cultural resources um, located on Laurel Hill. Um, the one that we are impacting in this right away for the bypass road is there are no graves. It's scattered pottery and some other artifacts like that. And so you know, there, there, there will be the due diligence done. Those against the revised concept say the project is not a viable solution. Those in favor of it say it's worth the extra $55 million price tag. This, this presentation did not look like an improvement to Highway 41, but a demolition to Park West and Dunes West. $187 million is grand larceny for the taxpayers. What is $57 million when you're talking about people's lives, when you're talking about their children's and their children's lives? 
So anyone here that thinks it's all right that you can destroy a community so you can get to where you want to go faster, then I would say you might need to check your pulse. Project leaders say they plan to meet with the surrounding neighborhoods in the next seven days or 10 days to get more feedback. And an update this morning on the new fire station right near the Sofa Superstore site on Savannah Highway. Charleston City Council member Peter Sheed told us that fire station 11 is expected to be open by the summer. The Charleston police, they're on the lookout for two people involved in two separate assaults downtown. The first happening on Meeting Street back on February 12th. Take a look at your screen right there. Police say that these people may have information that could help their investigation. And about two weeks later, another assault downtown, this time at the corner of King and Calhoun. Charleston police say they're searching for these six people. They want in connection to an aggravated assault. If you have any information, you're asked to contact Charleston police. Now, police in Bluffton, they say that two more suspects connected to a deadly shooting turned themselves in. Police say that Jimmy Green and Tylee Cheneyfield are both facing charges of murder and attempted murder. Police say that a Bluffton High School student was killed on Friday in a shooting two other people were told were injured. 436 and the woman accused of killing her stepson will have more time to review the evidence before she stands trial. Leticia Stauk is accused of killing 11-year-old Gannon Stauk. Gannon, who moved from Horry County to Colorado with his parents years ago, was found last year after an extensive two-month search. State Leader is creating a new office. It's aimed at helping people in the state recover after severe weather incidents. It's called the Office of Resilience. Governor McMaster appointed Ben Duncan to be the agency's first chief. The new legislation also instructs local governments to buy out properties that flood repeatedly and remove them from floodplains. All right, a quick heads up for those of you in Goose Creek. You're now going to have to drive a bit further to get that Chick-fil-A sandwich. Relax, just a temporary measure here. The chain in Goose Creek announcing that it's going to be closed starting on Thursday for remodeling. It'll stay closed until May. It's the location right there on St. James Avenue. Officials say until the reopening, you can stop by the Somerville Chick-fil-A for that fix. The International African American Museum launching its first digital exhibit, all part of their ongoing partnerships with Google Arts and Culture. That exhibit allows audience members to take a closer look at Sol Agree Island, the community representing an example of one of the surviving African-American communities in the South Carolina Sea Islands. Google Arts and Culture listing Sol Agree as one of the many locations essential to black history here in the United States. And just in time for spring, Patriots Point launching a new annual pass program called Friends of the Fleet Pass. It costs just 69 bucks. It includes annual admission for the pass holder and a guest. Friends of the Fleet will also get free parking and a 10% discount at the gift shop. Spring break looking a bit different from when, well, you and I were probably in college. Coming up on Good Morning Charleston, the unusual incentive for students in California, what their university is now asking them to do and what they're offering. Nice day out there today. Great day for outdoor activities. I will let you know when rain will finally return to the forecast. Also, how warm those temperatures will get by the end of the work week. That's coming up. 59% that's how many voters believe the federal government is in special interest group. It looks out primarily for its own interests. The Scott Rasmussen National Survey found that just over 17% of voters disagree. 23% not sure. A majority of every measured demographic group sees the federal government as a special interest group, including 68% of Republicans, 61% of independent voters, and 51% of Democrats. We'll be right back.